can actually get out of it by slowing the plane down and doing a sharp turn as demonstrated here. Now, see how this plane is going out of control? I can slow myself down till the plane begins to get faster than me. Faster airspeed. Hey, what's up dudes? Kublik on here and welcome to World of Warplanes. Yes, World of Warplanes is a multiplayer shooter involving aircraft that allows you to fly around and it's team based. Now before we get into it, this is a little bit of a how-to video because as I've been playing, I've been discovering a couple tricks that seem to keep me alive and get me kills pretty consistently. First one is burst firing, and if you're ever going to go head on to somebody else, try to always get above them. Specifically because if you hit them with your wheels, you're more likely to take them out in a ramming attack. Now that red circle is going to be where they want you to fire. So, but you don't necessarily have to be as too much in it. Just try to get that little crosshair in front and go front. Now, if you look at the left side of my uh, instrument panel, you see the kilometers per hour. That's your airspeed, not like your land speed. That's how fast air is going over your wings. The lower that number gets, well, then the slower you're going through the air and the more likely you are to stall. So you're going to try to minimize your stalls. My engine, uh-oh. Oh. Oop, oop. So my engine overheating was me using my thrust to too high of a point. Never seen anything like that in a real aircraft necessarily. I mean, you do have to worry about aircrafts overheating, but I mean, I've never, I'm not a, a fighter jet person. So, yep. So what's hitting me right now is AA fire. If you watch my health in the very center of the screen, it's actually not doing a lot to me. Uh, AA fire is pretty low damage. It's scary though, um, however your opponents will have very high fire. Now, let's talk about some aircraft stuff. See on the right, you see my uh, altimeter? That's my meters above the ground. <clears throat> Easy to understand, but important. Because the higher pilot tends to do better in a dogfight. You get more airspeed, so you're going through the air faster, you can climb better as you're dropping down. And on top of that, it also gives you a little bit of a an option to be firing down from above, which is much harder to defend against. Now, let's uh, get into another dogfight, and I'm hoping we're going to get somebody to do this for us, but I want to show you what is the worst way to avoid being destroyed in this game. It's, um, now, here we go, Type 91, you're, a, you're our target. He's coming heads in. Okay, he got me wheels down, so I ended up taking some damage from that. Now, as I turn around on this guy, I slow down uh, my engine. So, and for me, that's left bumper. But it's important to slow down your engine when you're trying to shoot at someone. Because a lot of times, people will do this dancing twirl thing. It doesn't really do anything except slow them down so that you end up flying past them. Thus making them a harder target to shoot. Now, so you want to slow your engine down, unless you do this. This, you want to go faster. You want to, because that is a very dangerous point to be in, facing someone down. Now, it really depends on your aircraft, but at least in the, like, tier one, you want to get past your opponent as quickly as possible. Specifically, because then you want to try to get behind them to the best that you can. As you can see, I'm actually being shot from behind right now, so we're going to turn off from this. Super tight turn. Slow down. There we go. Perfect. So now that person and I are in a spiraling spin. I'm now behind him, taking him out, or just assisted, whatever. We took him out. The important thing here is to keep in mind that you don't want to be having anyone on your 6 kind of thing. You want to put people on your 12, but if they get onto your 6, you can actually get out of it by slowing the plane down and doing a sharp turn, as demonstrated here. Now, see how this plane is going out of control? I can slow myself down till the plane begins to get faster than me faster airspeed thought process is if you can imagine that's an opponent I'm going after it's really hard to shoot at someone going slow so you're gonna want to try to go after people oh, I almost hit my own dude so you're gonna try to want to slow down when you're going after your opponent there we go this guy is screwed poor dude um, but uh, you want to make sure that you have keep them in front of you the best that you can and it's very easy to have people to get around you by slowing their craft down and turning. Now, that technique works great on a one-to-one -one fight. This isn't always a one-to-one -one fight. In the case of this person, this person's screwed because there are three, four 
counting my five counting myself aircraft heading straight for him. So I'm turning up the I'm hitting my boost right now. Now this guy appears to be an extra large aircraft, and uh, he's too far away for me to start hitting him yet. But he's about to lose. Up, oh, he's down. So all right, we've taken one of this. Now there's a little intro of a couple of things. I'm gonna repeat them as we continue to play. Let's go and talk a little bit about the actual style of rewards that World of Warplanes likes to do. Here we go. So, first thing that's important to keep in mind is this ha This is your general, I've killed everything screen. It's pretty typical, it shows how many people you, you know, how, what the fighting was, who these people are, I don't know. But here's us, we killed two aircraft, we had 30 points, and we also helped destroy two. So, it gives you a uh, team and not including or total not including bonuses and then total received this is experience for the aircraft class and then you have actual money uh you can check out the detail report you can check out the team score it's it's a you know general fare but let's take a moment to look at the screen that allows you to kind of alter your plane uh, i'm going to do this real quick so you have upgrades which these are ones that I've actually purchased already and done myself. I've increased the airframe. I have increased the engine. I have not added on this new engine. I could purchase and mount it. Uh, and we'll hover over it real quick. But the thing is, it adds a hundred... Um, you know, it only slows down my maneuverability too. So let's take a moment to click it. This is the purchase price. We won this, that like 4,000 from the last match. So we can do this. Now, there's a thing that... I actually researched this engine and I researched it which takes research points which is right here straight above me research points are all about uh, that when you're actually flying that class of aircraft the plan with it is that you want to build up enough research points to uh, begin to research these see how this is 220 that's 220 uh, experience in this actual type of plane now I could actually move through these and go up to the next aircraft that I'm allowed to upgrade you can see that I've actually moved on to this airplane, and I, you can in fact view it in the hangar. First of all though, I think uh, it makes sense to research, nah, you know what, that's not really worth it. It only gives me six more airspeed. Um, to look at this next tier aircraft. So these tier aircraft are follow the same path. Think of a level up. Now we're gonna do another battle, but we're gonna do it in the Goldfinch. This is another tier one class. Now the reason I'm sticking to tier one is because most of you, when you try out this game, are going to start in Tier 1. Crazy. You can actually, if you want, you could buy more. Or you could even do extra, um, like, put some money in. Or right when you start, you actually get some extra bonuses that I think you could probably buy to Tier 2. I wouldn't recommend it, though, because Tier 2, you get to a level of strategy, which makes it go to a point where you kind of want to learn how to control your craft pretty well first. So I'm gonna stop talking for a second because of this loading screen. Okay, so we jumped here. Now, the loading screen is based off of cues to be able to play the game. Uh, they put people in tiers, so if you're a tier one aircraft, you're gonna go against other tier one aircraft. You might go up against a fully leveled up tier one aircraft, like myself going up against this guy. I am better in every single thing except altitude performance because I upgraded my plane. However, if you notice, I'm five better, I'm 11 better, I'm two better. I'm not significantly better and that's important to keep in mind because it, if you're playing in this starting area very much it doesn't really matter what aircraft you're flying they all are kind of similar they're all kind of designed to introduce you into how the game is played now what you see me doing right now is trying to rapidly gain altitude as I mentioned before um, I wanted to do the best that I can because it's better to come down now if you look behind me, Kublai, you see the map? That map shows where everybody is and will also update when they find certain people. Now, I didn't mention this, but you have one life whenever you're flying your craft. And it's an elimination style. Now, this is important to keep in mind because if you're killed, you're out. And losing a person is pretty rough in a team-based game when it's about team deathmatch. Especially because what ends up happening is as we start or you start or whoever Getting to a point that you don't have all right. We have people already trying to come up and hit me There we go. We got a couple shots now. It's time to turn All right, let's see if we can find this guy That's it 
So, here we go. Like I mentioned, you slow down. He's gonna start doing this twirly thing that's stupid. Now, it does slow him down, but it doesn't exactly help in the way. Now, we have somebody else who's firing at me. Um, this is a problematic situation to be in. He's gonna crash into the ground, isn't he? Yep. So, I'm really low, but I have a really high kilometers per hour airspeed, so I'm gonna instantly turn around and go up, put my engine as hard as it can go, get some air, there we go. Perfect, now we're back at 200 meters. There's a thing in flying, it's called low and slow. It's the worst thing you can be. Now, you can be high and slow, that's okay, because you have a lot of altitude to get yourself some extra airspeed. Now, if you're low and fast, same idea. You can turn that airspeed into altitude because you naturally lose airspeed as you start lifting up. This person is 100% flying away from me. But we're not going to let that stop us. We're going to chase after this dude because we are actually alone at the moment. Just him and I, or her and I, or them and I, I don't know. But we might actually be able to hit this person. Yeah, we can hit them from here. Oh, uh, yeah, see, they're already beginning to do the twirl thing. Avoid that at all costs. If someone's firing at you like this on your six, turn around and fire back. It is very difficult to deal with someone doing that. Versus this, I can very easily catch you. Now, if your airplane, let's say, is fast, crazy fast, you can run away really well and not have to worry about that. But if your aircraft is like how all these aircraft are in the starting area, which are pretty equal, there isn't really any differences between speed or firepower. You won't be able to run. One, the person might be faster than you if you just started the game. And two, well, because, uh, you know, you find yourself in a situation where we're all pretty much the exact same. You might be able to catch up. There we go. Goldfinch on our way. Now, I personally like the Goldfinch best. There we go. Oh, perfect. This guy is coming straight into me. But he's turned, so I'm going to slow down my thrust completely turn around and get behind him now the reason why you want to hit your thrust to slow down is because if you speed up it creates a wider turning radius not necessarily what you want unless however when you put your wings like this you actually require more airspeed to stay up and not to stall so keep that in mind that sometimes it does make sense to hit your uh, engine boost when you're in a turn but typically if you want the t sharpest turn you want to pull back all thrust. That will cut you back and you'll do the tightest turn and be able to turn and head on into the person that is firing at you. Okay, I skipped ahead a little bit because there are times I'm being AA fired. Damn it, stop it. Um, that's another reason to fly up higher. But uh, often there will be times when there there's a lot of waiting in this game. Now it's waiting because you're like chasing after an opponent and it's strategic. You know, like there's a, cause you have to get to your opponent. You guys have to fire upon him. And uh, as a group, you're trying to work together. All right, this person's firing at one of our own dudes. But we're going to keep him. Wow, we are... Oh, don't do that, dude. You're going to crash. Wow. That was close. All right, so pull back the thrust. Watch your airspeed at this situation. Because we're, we're really low and we're slowing down. All right, I'm going to cut the thrust again. Turn sharply. There we go. Warning low altitude. All right, he's going to come in pretty pretty hard, but he might actually crash from that move. All right, we have plenty of airspeed still. Sharpest turn that we have available. All right, he's coming pretty hot, but missed. So this is the dance of death in a, one of these things. Now, it's called that. No, I'm calling it that because you're in this constant rotation. All right, here we go. I'm having some trouble getting behind him, so I'm going to try to pop through here staying low because this is going to be very hard to follow and shoot at at the level of height that he is also in now i don't recommend doing this because if he can just get a good ring around me he'll be able to come up and surprise me but my goal is to actually have him not see me and know where i am keep your airspeed up very high at this point because if your airspeed comes down and you stall you will come down hard all right now he's behind me again we're going to do that sharp turn. Now we're actually... Damn it, stop going in. We're going to actually hit the engine this time because we want to keep our airspeed up. Pull back. Now I'm pulling back the thrust. Turning, there he is. Okay, now we have a much better beat on him. There we go. We're going to be able to fire on him pretty straight head-on soon. Uh-oh. 
So, that's an advantage of going into first person's view. Is that you're able to see when you're about to crash headlong into a wall. Okay, now this is actually pretty useful to talk about. If you go back to your hangar, alright, the match is still going on. It's just going on without you. Now, you can still win the match, and I think you still come out with rewards. The, the thing is that's important, though, is that you see how the, it now says in battle right here? That's letting us know that we can't use that plane at the moment. It's actually in battle. And in fact, if it gets damaged a lot, you have to pay for it to come back. Pay as it not like money money, but like you repair it using the money that you earn up here, that currency exchange. Now, this is very much free to play where they're setting things up for you to, you know, experience and pl in the, they're hoping you'll shell out some money, especially once you're in the higher tiers, because that has a situation where a, a weapon, like some airplanes will be super fast compared to others that are super high powered uh, in the form of like firing power. Now I'm going to take a moment to wait because you have to wait for a queue. This is a tier two aircraft and tier two aircrafts have much more difficult aircraft to fight now. So this is going to be a little rough. I uh, We lost last time. Um, we might lose again this time. Okay, so I was talking about how different aircraft have different levels of power and stuff, and we actually missed this opportunity, but I want to point this out again. If you look at the where my name is, which is on the left side, you can see that Kublai K, which is Kublai Khan, has a, an, a two Roman numeral next to it. That's representing the different uh, tier of aircraft. Now you can see I have a longer boost. I can fly up higher, faster. My aircraft is faster. It also has better weaponry. It has, um, actually, I upgraded the guns themselves as well. Now, I'm trying to avoid getting into a contact um, before an, a, one of my teammates is. Because if you fly into a group where they can surround you, eh, you die pretty quick. All right, here we go. We got another two guys coming from over here. You can see the different symbols above their aircraft. That actually means it's a different type of airplane. Uh, something like a multi-role fighter, which is a type of fighter that is multiple roles, no duh. Other- uh-oh, whoa! Okay, um, these guys typically are bombing-esque, or they have very high amounts of speed, coupled with uh, rear-firing guns, and, um, which don't do a lot of damage, but are very frightening. Coupled with rear-firing guns, very good, um, ability to climb. All right, we're about to stall. We got to pull off. See how it turns red? All right. Going down. Shoo. All right, here we go. Turn and get back again. There he is. So. Now, that individual has better climb than I do. We are very high in the air, too. 12,000. Excuse me, 1,200 meters. Last game, we didn't even pass, like, 800. So. There's an example of how the different flight gets involved. Now, I'm choosing this individual because... Okay, here we go. Perfect, perfect. He's coming back down. We're close. When we get to about 450 meters, we can start firing. All right, he is way faster than me. So if he just takes off in that direction, we're not going to keep up. Yeah, all right, he's gone. There's nothing we can do about that dude. There's plenty of other people here for us to fire upon. A couple who seem really close. Now, if you notice the boats and the like below me, uh, those boats, you can actually shoot and get, like, points for hitting. But, it, uh, it's not nearly as much as aircraft. Okay, this is really bad. Um, it was really bad. I went down. I was supposed to go up. I've told you guys that. And I didn't do it. Um... So the thing is, that's important to keep in mind, is that these smaller aircraft cannot take ramming into the larger aircraft. Just the general basics of any form of, you know, just momentum. So what ended up happening there was that I went down versus if I went up, we I would have potentially been able to hit my the bottom part of my craft into him and that would have been better. Check it. We actually, the Goldfinch, um, where we, we were shot down in the Goldfinch, they won that match, so we got an award of 300, well, it went away, but we got a reward, you, you can see that. Um, and that has allowed us to get more goldfinch upgrades and the like. Now, 
I think that's enough for what we were talking about. Uh, this is World of Warplanes. I'm going to keep playing this. I want to keep sharing it with you. But if you liked what you saw, please leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. Go ahead and click that down below. If you want to see some of the Fallout 4 permadeath stuff, that's right over there. Go ahead and check that out. Or if you want to check straight to my left, you also have more use of Fly Day stuff just goofing off. Let me know if you like this. Give me a comment down below. And dudes, may the ground rise to meet your feet. The wind always be at your back. And the sun shine warmly on your sexy, sexy face. See ya. Bye. Thank you.